just nine minutes into the hour. It is 2 or 9 p.m. And the 25th of the October, month of October for that matter, is a very big day in as far as the deputy president impeachment hearing or trial, if you like, is concerned. It's not a very new date in as far as how much it's been mentioned since the, uh, of course, the weekend started. That is on Friday. A number of Kenyans are seeing this come to pass. We saw the courts sit earlier this morning, but then it was a very brief engagement until they again adjourned or took a short break and they're on recess as we're speaking, but we're expecting the courts then to resume again in about in a few minutes because what we know then is that they will be back at 2.30 PM. If they will extend that time, you are still covered because I'm here with legal minds, quite brilliant minds in that uh, regard. Also, they are um, political analysts. Uh, and I want to appreciate Paul Mugambi, who is a political uh, analyst, uh, for creating time to be here this afternoon, and also a lawyer. Okay. I also want to appreciate uh, one, uh, the advocate in studio, that is uh, Charles. Charles, it's very good to have you. Karim Thank Sana. you. Thank you very much. Gentlemen, let's start on <coughs> a light note. Uh, Kenyans are, I don't know if, if, if it's tension or anxiety, because still the question has continued to come through our social media platforms. How long does the court plan to take? It looks like a simple question, but it's good to retake it over and over again until we get to the grassroots. Um, yes. What, well, let me start with Paul. Uh, how long? I know it has been said. Well, constitutionally, the president has 14 days uh, to nominate. We already have a nominee, all right? Now we have, he's called the deputy president designate. Um, but we also had 60 days then, um, you know, constitutionally. But what we're seeing, as some lawyers are saying, is lightning speed at which things are moving. That is even causing some sort of lack of confidence in how the judiciary is going to be carrying out itself. But just tell us, what is there in the Constitution? How much time do we have? Does the court have all its time to take? Because what is now happening is a recusal matter. You know, we don't want this three-judge bench. We needed a CJ to constitute them. Is it such a big issue? Um, thank you very much. Karibu Sada. And, uh, first of all, these matters are before the courts. They came through single-judge benches. Mm -hmm. um, then they have been consolidated, the matter in Kirinyaga, the matter at Milimani, now it's being heard by a three-judge bench. And um, the reason as to why the, the matters were heard as a matter of priority before every other matter is because uh, they were certified as urgent. Those two main ones? They were certified as okay. urgent. So it, for me, it doesn't make sense as a, as, a, as, a, as, a, uh, as a lawyer why I would want a matter hard so quickly, then suddenly I'm complaining about the speed. I thought, we said when the matter is urgent. So it, it, in, in my view, the, the, it, it doesn't make sense that um, there are those of the view that the courts are taking the matter so quickly. We are dealing with a very serious matter right now in the country and we don't want any ten the moment of tension in the country if um, uh, in, in, in there's any absence of, of, the, of, the, of the president. Mm -hmm. So you cannot stop a process that is constitutionally provided for and again our courts must not also be, be meandering and you know uh, seeming, uh, seemingly trying to eat into the territory of uh, politics that's left for parliament. Uh, these three arms of government are de independent. All right. Even though they're interdependent because sometimes they, 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 they uh, consult each other and even though there are checks and balances, um, the mechanisms for checks and balances, but none of those uh, arm, three arms of government can superintend over the other. None of them uh -huh. um, um, should supervise the other. So it, 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 it goes without saying, therefore, that the the territory that is that remains for the court is so limited and they don't have forever for heaven's sake they don't have forever okay. so they should hear this matter ex expeditiously and dispense off with the issue as quickly as possible thank you very much those are your opening remarks on this matter charles omanga
is also joining us. Uh, Wakili, what, what, what would be your opening remarks to this, especially after the first session um, this morning? <clears throat> I think, um, thank you very much. I think it Harry is quite Paul. unfortunate, uh, the situation that we have found ourselves in as a country. Uh, remember, this is the first uh, impeachment process of a deputy president. And uh, the politics around the entire process, I think what we have now is no tension. Uh, I think it is anxiety because anxiety. tension, yeah, it is mm -hmm. people are very anxious and eager to know what would be the possible outcomes from this uh, legal, entire legal process. Mm -hmm. But one thing that we should remind ourselves, um, I think <coughs> the, 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 the mere fact that these matters were certified as agent and were filed under a certificate of agency, doesn't mean, therefore, that uh, all preliminary issues that would ensure that the, the, notion, of, the notion of bad faith is, is, is dispelled is that I know the courts know what, what this means for the country, and therefore they will ensure that they finish this entire process within a reasonable time. Mm -hmm. And the reasonable time, you know, the Constitution says that we, uh, after the, the, the president has up to 60 days to fill that vacancy, and now that we... <coughs> we have the... No, sorry, the, the president has 14 days. Yes, but True. now, <coughs> after the parliament has approved the nominee, within that period, I think the court shall have ensured that they, they dis discharge this, this uh, issue of these files before the court. And more importantly, um, when there is preliminary issues, for example, matters of recusal, mm -hmm. um, we, you cannot castigate um, a litigant for actually trying to show that maybe a particular bench is not properly impaneled. And uh, one thing that they must also prove is that they must show that there is an apparent bias on, in, on the side of the bench that has, has been so far impaneled. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I don't think that we should really question whether the, 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 the advocates that have filed that such an application, what should be done is that the court in itself must, in its wisdom, must ensure that they discharge those preliminary objections or those preliminary issues so that they go to the main point. All right, so looking at what happened this morning, do you think that either the litigants and the judges are acting uh, in accordance to what you would expect as first a Kenyan and as an advocate? Do you think we are proceeding um, in a good speed in your observation, uh, Charles Omanga? I don't think we are proceeding in a good speed uh, because now the, that anxiety in itself is not good for the country because there would be those uh, resultant effects out of the entire thing. Uh, therefore, I would, re I would believe that uh, this afternoon uh, the mm -hmm. judges would come with a concrete decision that would allow this process maybe, because hearing of those applications, because mm -hmm. uh, you know um, there is no so much that the court is going to deal with. What the right. court is going basically to deal with are three major issues. Mm -hmm. One is whether uh, the process uh, uh, entailed what we call procedural fairness. The was process there, of impeachment? Yeah, the, mm -hmm. the procedural, was there any procedural misstep? If the court, the, uh, the consul provides that during the entire process, this is the procedure. Mm -hmm. Was there any procedural missteps? And um, again, another issue that the court will try to interrogate, whether there was a violation of fundamental rights under the Bill of Rights of the, the impeached, the so impeached deputy president. All right. Another issue that basically they will deal with is whether the allegations, the, the, the approved allegations at the Senate, mm -hmm. Did they really meet that constitutional threshold of impeaching uh, a deputy president? Right. So basically, there is no so much that the court is going to do. Those are the, the things that the court is really going to deal with. So I think once they discharge this, this issue of, uh, of recusal and whatever, the, the, whatever preliminary issue of whatever nature that have been raised, then I think the, 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 the hearing of this application cannot take maybe half a day and the following day we get a decision, then the president can move on. So to do and take less time, let me hear from Wakili Mugambi. Do you share these sentiments? This I don't afternoon? think so. I don't think it will be that fast. I, I wish it would, um, like my colleague uh, Manga says, but I think <laughs> the, the reason as to why, the, there are so many uh, strategies for, to go before the courts. All right. Um, and some of them are basically frivolous. There is no, 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 no uh, legal team that will come and tell you that these are, you just want to pass time 
we want to buy a few more days or we want to see how far we can stretch this. They can't tell you that. So um, based on what happened on, on, on Tuesday and Wednesday, when they went for the hearing about um, um, the impanelment mm -hmm. and the time that was taken there. Mm -hmm. um, the sitting. Uh, um, we're talking about the substantive matter now. All right. Because the substantive matter uh, is yet to be, to be you know, uh, the, the, the sets of uh, parties have not even responded to it. But the uh, main application right now before the... the, the, the the bench mm -hmm. is about setting aside the conservatory orders. It's not about the main suit that were in Kirinyaga and in at Milimani High Court. That will come at a different stage because the Attorney General and the National Assembly and the Senate applied for setting aside of those mm -hmm. orders. Mm -hmm. So that comes first. So immediately they deal with the pre they finish handling the preliminary issue of recusal. Um, because I think those are the primarily the two interlocutory um, applications that are before the courts. Um, they will go straight to the main suit, uh, the, or the suit of um, setting aside the orders. All right. And therefore, um, if the bench is convinced, um, by the way, you know, it's strange that on one hand, um, you'd want to get expert orders and set aside um, um, certain decisions made by an arm of government, mm -hmm. expert orders, single judge bench, but three judge bench, mm -hmm. uh, inter party, you don't want. That's why I'm interpreting it to mean, you know, this could be uh, their, 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 their legal, their, their legal the strategy for the, their legal team. You're, you're referring to the deputy president's legal team? Yeah, yeah. I okay. Mean, let's, let's pass time. Let's see how far we can stretch this, you know. Uh, we don't know how it go, but you know, let's 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 stretch it as 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 far as we can. Uh, it it you've seen those things. Some of things you're seeing, you see them in movies, and some of the, those movies act in, uh, in, in, in 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 like a court setup and those kind of things. So it, it it's happening actually in our lifetime. <laughs> so I am looking at it and I'm like, wow. Um, I don't think it will be that fast. Um, I'm looking at next week. All right. if, if they they have to go to the, the to the main issues, where the main issues here mean they are now passed uh, the lifting of conservatory orders, uh -huh. and they are now listening to the main suit. Or however, what might happen in between is that the the, the bench might lift the orders. The same three judge bench. Of course, it's the next issue that they are going to handle. All right. And if they lift the orders, you know, the chief justice. And the registrar of the judiciary, the CRJ, are at liberty to the order serves. Because it preserves the, the situation as it were. And if we were to allow and permit that let it, the bench lift the, the order, conservatory orders, what then follows? If at all, then the, the, the courts will find mm -hmm. uh, make a decision to the contrary of what the Senate did. Mm -hmm. uh, and what would be now the remedies for, uh, for the, the impeached uh, deputy president and the, the, the newly sworn in deputy president. So this, uh, we find ourselves in a legal conundrum that really calls for sobriety. Mm -hmm. And that therefore uh, now prevents what we call judicial activism. Judicial activism rendered um, in, a, in a, a better language is where certain judicial decisions are influenced by personal poly, personal philosophies of the, the, the said judge that is uh, uh, sitting mm -hmm. and when we put up uh, the, the uh, politic we allow politics now to go in you know the senate thing the national assembly those who are entire process those who are political processes All right. but now what we are faced with is now a legal process and there are those legal dictates that must be adhered to Therefore, uh, I think uh, we should not say once they come in and we get a decision whether they recuse themselves or not, because the, the, the chief justice is there. The um, um, empaneling a bench does not take even more than an hour. You just say, uh, Charles Omanga, Mugambi, and so and so, we go handle these files. So then, Wakili Charles, allow me to just uh, interject. Uh, then we, have, we saw this matter discussed yesterday. Yeah. The, the, the judges were very clear on, on their stand. They said that DCJ, Philomena Mwilu, can come.
carry out administrative functions of the CJ. Yes, they, of they, course. They, they defined and they said that this particular legal teams that are not okay with the impanelment are pretty much, um, they refer to them as as uh, not not being very objective at this point in time. Yeah. That was clarified by each judge who, that spoke. I'm talking yeah. about Justice Eric Ogola, Justice Anthony Mrima, Justice Fred, they, Fred uh, Mugambi. They said they have been properly empaneled. I agree with the, that decision uh, because uh, indeed uh, under Article 165, uh, 1B, it permits the D DCJ to uh, execute such functions uh, or those administrative functions. Then, then why, why is, why is there this kind of uh, still, what you call anxiety, if that is as clear as it is? What I'm saying is, you know, uh, the various, those who raised that made that recuse, application yes. for recusal, yes. uh, majorly, uh, well, as I was following, they were majorly lying on the power of the DCJ to empanel a bench. Mm -hmm. uh, what means that, therefore, uh, and more importantly, so also, is the fact that um, if the grounds for recusal was maybe based on my maybe past conduct of either mm -hmm. one of the, the people, the panel bench, one of the either of the judges, or maybe there is that glaring and apparent bias towards the litigants before the court, okay. then that would actually be from the the major ground for recusal. Mm. So I think the judge, the, the bench in its wisdom would come up with a proper decision that would guide this entire process so that we can conclude it as fast as it we could. And uh, me, my worry is only by the, this application to lift the, the orders. What, what will lift the conservatory orders? What would it mean, uh, for example, um, that they will, they will make a finding that he was not properly impeached? Mm -hmm. Would we now again remove uh, Professor Kiture Kindike as being deputy president of Itam uh, Rigadi Gashagwa? I think that would be something we, sh we will be calling, let me loosely, sorry, we will be breaking the virginity of the judiciary. So what we need to do uh, is that let us let us ensure that everything that we do right now is that is focusing that would give just do justice to to the the the, the impeached deputy president and also kenyans in uh, the general citizen all right yes uh, let me bring this up as well wakili mugambi um and i just took it word by word but for and i'll read it as it is the uh the judges were very clear this this uh, morning on you know parties responding to pleadings and i think when they got in they even started um, for a moment there trying to give the flow of how the cases will will flow but there was in objections i think uh, through that and they said that the courts uh, will not tell you know the parties or uh, when to respond to pleadings however they should avoid taking the courts in circles this this was very clear this morning from one of the judges now he said what happens uh, when one party doesn't respond you know th there's that now back and forth seemingly and for the judge to make this statement it got me a bit curious if it's an observation perhaps you've seen uh, that warning that came up very strongly that each party should know when to respond to pleadings they shall not be asked to do that and they should refrain from taking the courts in the circles i alluded to that earlier all right when i said that um i'm not too sure Whatever they are doing is in good faith. It's part of the strategy to buy time. I, I still think, think so. Um, my colleague uh, disagrees. But that's fine. Um, but I also want to comment on two things that you said. One, um, the court do not have that territory that eats into the three-quarter territory of parliament, the, the two houses of parliament, the National Assembly and the Senate, in the sense that they can go and now look at each of the five grounds and whether uh, they were the merits thereof the merits of each one of those they don't have that uh, leeway but they will have to check on the process no they can check on the process and he mentioned that yes. so i agree with him on one point he mentioned three things i agree that the, the courts and there is a decision by the supreme court by the way mm -hmm. on that matter they can only check on the procedural fairness absolutely it is not their business because the, the, the trial of the National Assembly, the, uh, the Senate, sorry, the impeachment of the National Assembly and the subsequent trial of the Senate are not um, uh, judicial processes. They are political processes. What the, the mover of the motion 
and the members of the National Assembly needed to do at the trial is to prove that there was prima facie case um, um, and there was someone to take political responsibility. Mm -hmm. It is not a case where someone had to prove beyond reasonable doubt that uh, this is supposed to happen or even on, even on a balance of probability that this is what ought to have, uh, to have happened. So in this case, the courts must exercise judicial restraint and deal with what they're supposed to do, uh, to deal with, you know, the issues. Was he accorded a fair trial? Those are issues that I know the legal teams know so well and they're going to, 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 to advance in courts. They're going to talk about public participation. The, the basic tenets of our constitution, have, have they been followed uh, procedurally? Those are the things that the courts can go to. Because the court is not a supervisor, again, of uh, the two houses of parliament. The courts uh, look at violations, and mm -hmm. uh, especially on procedure, mm -hmm. uh, because that is their territory, and that's about it. The, the, the moment they try to go into political issues, <coughs> or eat into that territory, you know, it might seem right right now, but it will catch up with them somehow, some way, when parliament now tries to interfere also with what they do. That's why you see, if a matter is seized by the courts, parliament does not take it up. Okay. Because of um, the rule of subjudice. And if a matter is in parliament, then the courts this time round, you saw of the 26 applications mm -hmm. that were before the, the courts, mm -hmm. they refuse to give the orders because they say, no, wait, wait a minute. You are even uh, trying to preempt the outcome. Of, the, of what will happen in the two houses of parliament. But is that new, really? We've seen people take anticipatory, um, I think when... That's a separate are, issue, really. It's a separate, That's okay. a very, very... Um, you, you, now, before I come to you, Charles, uh, yeah. Omanga, just, just give me a second with, um, with uh, Wakili Mugambi here, because Charles mentioned something yeah. on the two conservatory orders. And yeah. I think we've seen, uh, after the recusal, you said there's two major things, and these are the orders. And um, he, he was trying to compare then if the, because it's two orders, and each of these parties um, at this point is seemingly fighting for, you know, their own. You know, um, and this is what I'm talking about. There's one challenging the removal of deputy president from office. Another is seeking to clear the way for the swearing in of the interior. Uh, serious Kithure Kindiki. According to him, uh, that is Charles Omanga. He said, if the courts, all right, lifted the order that then bars Kithure Kindiki from swearing in, and he is then sworn in, deputy president Elgadi Gashaga will continue with the, with the case. Um, fair enough. But what happens then if the courts realize or you know, pretty much um, through the, the sessions, um, get to the verdict that he was not, you know, properly, as per the constitution, procedurally removed from office. You know, said it's going to put us in a, in a quagmire. The, 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 let, me, let me put this clear. Yes. All of us have been in this country when the Embu governor was impeached mm -hmm. by, the, by the county assembly of Embu, uh, successfully by the Senate, but now the courts overturned that, not once, not twice. And that matter went all the way to the Supreme Court. By the time it was concluded, and uh, that's when these precedents uh, of uh, public participation were set, mm -hmm. that's the, uh, the court said, yeah, the governor was properly impeached. Mm -hmm. But now, they were going for an election in the new term. How do you affect that? So the courts must be very clear that they, they, they must be judicious, yes, and they must also um, ensure that they, they are expeditious. So the time frame is very critical. And if parties are raising unnecessary, and that's why I like what the judges said this morning. All right. Like if you're going to take us in circles, we are not here for that. Please, let's go to the sub uh, substantive issues. Let's uh, be ob as objective as possible. Let's deal with that. Tell us what your matter is, what, what your arguments are. We'll take a decision. And, and I, I, I am for that. If they are trying to buy time and um, uh, go run uh, uh, into circles, then I think something will be terribly wrong. And those, the judges, the bench will be able to see that this, there is no merit here. Let us lift the conservative orders. Let us remove the, uh, the, the anxiety that is uh, in, in the country at the moment. Right. Let us lift the conservative orders. We're looking at about 30 cases being consolidated by this uh, three-judge bench. Let me hear from Wakili Charles Omanga. At this point in time, you know, he's saying, and I, you both agree, though, that we have to get over this anxiety and move now. <clears throat> I think uh, um, uh, it is not a big issue whether there is or whether there are a hundred applications because these applications right. um, are basically uh, the matter in issue is one. 
So basically, they are revolving around one thing. So that's how they are treated so, at this point. So it means dealing with them would be much easier for the courts. Okay. Because what they are, most of them are challenging the process, mm -hmm. others are questioning whether the, the deputy president was accorded any uh, fairness, mm -hmm. procedure, was procedurally fair in uh, their dealings. And uh, what I would want to say, suggest, um, uh, we know our constitutional theory is a partial theory. And that is why, you see, uh, I would not agree um, entirely with my colleague here, Mr. Mugambi, when he says that the courts will be wedding into politics. What is now before the, the courts is no longer a political issue. The political issues were dealt with at the National Assembly and the Senate. And what we are talking about here now, when we are talking about the standards of proof, that is why I'm, t I'm talking about the threshold, whether right. the, the allegations would meet the constitutional and legal threshold. Because uh, the weighing scale now would be whether if you raise an allegation of a misconduct, a gross misconduct, mm -hmm. the courts will have to interrogate whether the, their behavior or the conduct of the deputy president while in office amounts to what we call gross misconduct. And, uh, and you see, um, what that means is that... Um, Who will be proving? Not, not proving. The courts will now be sieving. What the, courts, the grounds for impeachment are is in the Constitution. So if this conduct, that is why the standard of proof is not on the balance of probability and neither is it on beyond reasonable doubt. Mm -hmm. The standards of proof in matters of impeachment is slightly above that of the uh, balance of probabilities and slightly below that of uh, beyond reasonable doubt in, in criminal matters. So these are the things that the court would really be uh, delving in on those issues of procedural fairness and whether those rights of a fair trial, you know fair trial is those among those non-derogable rights. Was he accorded a fair trial? Wakili Omanga, and, and I know I want to come back to Wakili Paul, I, when you're speaking of fair trial, and I just want to bring us closer home, because the only one that seemingly is vivid to all of us, uh, Kenyans uh, who are not, neither in the Senate, uh, um, neither are we in, you know, in law, is when the deputy president reported through his lawyer, Paul Muite, that senior counsel, Paul Muite, that he fell ill. Um, just when he was supposed to go before the Senate for about five hours of cross-examination, clarifications, etc. But then the Senate decided to proceed anyway. Um, is this something that, according to you in your observation, through your legal lens, is something that's going to come up uh, in court in as far as, um, you know, the concerns around the fair trial for the Deputy President as chief witness? Because uh, the Senate is concerned. I would say yes, okay. resoundingly yes. Well, why do I say so? Um, you know, when we talk about an inalienable rights, it means that right that cannot be taken away from you. And th those basic dictates of a fair, tri uh, fair trial, fair hearing, is that you must be given an opportunity to respond. That is non-derogable right. Therefore, what that means, you know, when uh, uh, D.P. Gashago, you see up to now, what was the hurry in the Senate that could not give up to Tuesday that they requested so that he can come and, and appear? You see now, even up to now, the, we are uh, at a stalemate. So they, they would have, because you could also now see the major rush in the entire process, was not, it was something that would ordinarily raise some notions of bad faith, you know. So fair here, <coughs> fair trial, that is a non-derogable right. No one, you must be accorded fair trial. You must. You must, you have to. That one is among the five rights that cannot be negotiated. Right. Non-derogable. Uh, oh, Wakili Mugambi, there is the written submissions. We also saw the deputy president impeached now, or removed constitutionally, you know, from the Senate uh, declarations. Um, give his uh, response, uh, first in a press, secondly at the parliament for about two hours, but the, this one at the Senate was equally in the process. It, it was dependent, uh, independent from the ones we had seen. Uh, but the question would be, is it not qualified then that the written submissions that he had given would still pass as response um, or fair trial in, in terms of looking at the written submissions and that the Senate would just need to have made some few clarifications. 
would that be a base to justify why Senate proceeded as so? Um, uh, uh, partly, yes. Okay. Because there are written submissions. And secondly, because um, the Senate trial uh, runs on timelines, um, basically 10 days. And that was the, uh, the eighth day almost going into the, into the ninth day. And um, uh, just to respond here, there was no hurry. All right. They just have to operate within a time frame. And the, 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 the date that was being um, you know, requested, that was for Tuesday, the following week, which is this week, mm -hmm. for Tuesday, was completely not applicable. It, that was, that would, be, would have been unconstitutional. Because the Senate has its days. The National Assembly has its days. This, this process is timed. So there's no way the Senate could violate the Constitution by going out and that. Also, let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. We live in this country, and I said some of these things we're seeing, I've seen them in movies. Um, and, you know, a drowning man will crouch on uh, straws. And partly, I think, the, 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 the strategy for the legal team is uh, of, the, of, the, of the impeached uh, deputy president mm -hmm. or the, the removed deputy president to borrow the ones of the Constitution um, uh, to just delay the process. And you cannot try to defeat justice. You cannot try by, by alluding to, to uh, certain provisions of the Constitution. Well, well Kili Paul, you, you keep emphasizing on delaying the process. Uh, what position, do you, what is your position in having a, 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 a bench that both parties, and now we're looking at a number of representations in, in, in this particular case, including the state being represented. Um, what is your stand in as far as the biasness allegation is concerned? You have continually emphasized that it is just but a mere intentional delay of the process. How do you know the Does benches? Does it not hold any water at all? How do you know the bench is biased? I mean, you, you cannot be both the judge and the jury. Look, you, you, the, that, that bench is constituted by uh, the Chief Justice or the DCJ the as, 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 as okay. applicable. All right. Okay. So in this case, uh, the, the CJ was out, out of the country. The Chief Justice was out of the country. And uh, she wrote a memo uh, to the deputy that she will be, she will be handling administrative matters. Mm -hmm. Fine. That happened. Uh, so you let the process proceed. If at all the... The, uh, there, is, there are some aggrieved parties about um, the impanelment. Mm -hmm. You know, the Court of Appeal is also available All right. way, for them. All right. Yeah. <coughs> I, I want to take a very short breather. Let, let, let me just make one Maybe comment. Maybe in 30 seconds. Yeah, within 30 seconds. I don't think it, 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 it would be on whose interest for the, the Gachagua team to delay the process. First of all, what are they enjoying by delaying the process? Public he is already out of office. He is not going to the office. He is not enjoying what that would be of the office of the deputy president. So it would never be on their interest to delay because out of that delay, what are they gaining? What is Deepi Gashagwa gaining? Political out dividends. Political dividends. Yeah, how? you delay it as, as long right, as gentlemen. you can. Oh, okay. All right, All right gentlemen. I want us to pick it up from there um, as we continue to also look at what exactly is happening uh, in the country at this point in time. But you have seen we are also on location at the Milimani Law Courts. Immediately the courts resume their hearings. We'll also cross over live, but we are following closely on the location with our reporters on the ground. It's all about the day three of the Deputy President Rigavi Gashagwa's. Uh, impeached rather deputy president regarding the was hearing uh, on the uh, corridors of justice a very short breather but we'll be right back with the legal minds after this break <laughs>